This is part two of a two-part series demonstrating how to add or edit a geostring. So let's edit the geostring I added in the previous video. In the first video, I covered the basic settings of a geostring, which include editing the geostring's title, adding locations, and adding a note to the geostring. So let's resume editing this geostring and begin with alert parameters. The first option is whether or not you want the geostring to be active. If the geostring is active, it will remind you when you reach one of your target locations. So in most cases, you want to keep this set to active. But you can always come in here and deactivate the geostring if you don't want to be alerted. By doing so, the geostring will, re will remain in the geostring history, and you can always bring it back up in the future and reactivate it. Also, when an alert pop-up is displayed, you'll be able to deactivate the geostring directly from there. I'll discuss alert pop-ups in a separate video in the geostrings guide series. The other alert parameter option is the radius from the target locations. So if you drive within this distance of any target locations, an alert pop-up will appear reminding you of your task at that location. You can also set this value to be anywhere between 0.1 miles and 20 miles. For geostrings where you want to remember to do something as you drive by a location, you'll want to set the target radius to one mile or larger. It'll be up to you to decide what value is right for you. If you set it to a smaller value, you won't have as much time to decide whether you want to stop and perform your task. If you set it to a larger value, you'll have plenty of time. However, you may forget about the task if you set it too far in advance. However, the alert pop-ups have a snooze option that won't let you forget. So really, it's all about your personal preference. You can also set a target radius of less than a mile, but I recommend you only do so in two scenarios. One is if you commute via non-motorized means, such as riding a bike or walking, for instance, in a metropolitan environment. It may make sense to set a, the target radius to a very small value, since all of your target locations may be within a one mile distance of each other. The second scenario is if your target location is your final destination, and you want to be reminded as you're arriving at the location, it would make sense to assign a very small target radius. For instance, if you're at work and you want to remember to do something when you get home, you'd want to set a small target radius. The next set of options are for date and time filtering. While geostrings is focused mainly on location-based reminders, there are times when it will be desirable to also set date or time-based filtering options. For instance, if you want to remember to pick up a DVD when it's released on February 1st, you would specify that as your start date. So February 1st, 2010. So otherwise, every time you drove by the DVD store, you would get an alert pop-up, which would not be very helpful considering the movie hasn't been released yet. You can also set an expiration date. When you do so, an alert pop-up will be displayed on your device on that date, even if you never reached any of your target locations. So if there's something you want to make sure you remember to do before a certain date, then this will be the perfect option for you. So for buying this DVD, let's say I want to remember before February 17th, 2010. So if I don't happen to drive by any of my DVD stores, I'm going to be reminded on, with a pop-up on February 17, 2010, it's just so that I don't forget. Um, you also have the ability to set time-based filtering. During the specified time, win time window, alert checking will be enabled. Outside of this window, alert checking is disabled. So let's say your favorite DVD store is open between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. If you drive by that store while it's closed, you don't want to be reminded to pick up a DVD. So setting this time window is definitely beneficial. The other benefit of using start and end times is for battery conservation. Geostrings will only run in the background when a geostring is active in a specified time window. So before 10 a.m. And, and after 7 p.m., geostrings will not run in the background, assuming there are no act other active geostrings, since they would have their own time window specified. I'll discuss all the battery conservation logic found within Ge the Geostrings app in another video of the Geostrings guide series. In addition to time, date and time filtering, you can also indicate which days of the week the Geostring will be active. So for instance, if you're at home on the weekend and you want to remind yourself to do something when you get to work on Monday, you could uncheck the Saturday and Sunday uh, options to ensure that an alert pop-up would not appear if you happen to drive by your workplace on the weekend. You could actually also use the start date filtering for this type of scenario. Another example would be if a store was not open on Sundays, you can uncheck Sunday so you wouldn't be reminded every time you drove by that location on a Sunday. You can also indicate whether this geostring will be saved as a favorite. All geostrings are saved in the history, but you may want to save certain geostrings in your favorites list so you can quickly bring them back up if needed. 
These would be tasks you perform on a regular basis that you'll, you'd like to reactivate. For instance, I may have a generic buy DVD geostring and save it as a favorite. Then every time a new movie is released, instead of creating a whole new geostring, I can edit this one and simply edit the title to indicate which movie I'm buying. The last option is whether you want the geostring to automatically save to your history. There may be some geostrings that you don't care to save in your history. It may be a one-time task that you know you'll never have to do again. So I've given you the option of deleting a geostring when you reach your target location and you deactivate the geostring. Please join me in the rest of the geostrings guide series as we explore the other features of the geostrings app.